What is going on everyone? My name is Earl here and what I have here is a 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro. Now why am I making a video about this again? Well fun fact guys I actually made a video about this MacBook a long time ago and the thing is I want to revive it because I actually decided to use this as a parts bin many months ago for my 2012 15 inch MacBook Pro that I was fixing at that time. But now that I've already fixed that, I decided to why not keep this thing as well. This is a fully functional one. More on that, a lot of these 2011 MacBook Pros, 15 inch specifically, have broken graphics because over time, they are a ticking time bomb. These run so hot to the point where the graphics actually you know, desolder themselves. And in a way, it's not really a good thing for Apple at the time. And they had a recall for these by replacing the logic board and this and that. And I believe this is probably a replaced logic board for it to last this long. But again, it goes back to the same question. They really did not replace the design aspect of the graphics. And so over time, they will still die anyway. But that was a pretty interesting Apple at the time where they didn't really do anything when it comes to fixing it. Similar to the butterfly keys where they thought they fixed it, but not really. It's just replacing it and over time it will be the same problem over and over again. Anyway, I am planning on using this as a machine to download a lot of things and this and that for Open Core Legacy Patcher, which I'm very glad to use. I love Open Core Legacy Patcher and I plan on putting Monterey on this computer if it runs properly. Because this doesn't really have any metal support, I'm not really sure if this thing will run fine with it. Last time, I took out the trackpad out of this computer, specifically the cable for the trackpad for the 2012 15 inch MacBook that I had. The only thing is that it was actually cheaper to buy the whole trackpad rather than buying just the cable itself. There is some sort of glue around this area. Taking it off apart would actually be more fragile than just buying the whole thing. And so with these older trackpads and all cables, as you can see how brittle they are, they are very brittle. And so I want to make sure that I don't break any of these or at least have a less chance of breaking them. I decided to just buy a whole set of trackpad and cable at the same time. What I have here is a Samsung 850 Evo that I have been using and I'm sure you guys have seen this a couple of times. I've used it on a lot of MacBooks that I've used as a daily and there's a lot of files here that I use. I believe this has OpenCore Big Sur, OpenCore Monterey and Catalina, I believe, some sort of something like that. This actually originated from this MacBook right here and that's why I'm putting it back where it belongs. <laughs> And of course, last but not the least, I found these 16 gigs um, of memory in my parts bin. And I'm not sure if these work, but if they do, that would be fantastic. But these are 1333, so they should work perfectly for this computer. All right, opening this thing up, as you can see, you are greeted with the glorious matte display. And it's quite a bit dusty, but that's to be expected. I haven't really touched this thing in probably half a year. To start things off, this actually comes with a Phillips head. So these are very easy accessible computers at the time. I mean, you could easily upgrade this and you won't have to buy any dedicated screws like today's MacBooks. And even back in the day with the Retina MacBooks that were introduced, they had dedicated screws. Let's pop this thing out and hopefully there's nothing that will surprise us. Before I go any further with this, I want to make sure these RAM actually would boot up. I don't remember if these have issues or not, but these are unnamed brands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, fan spinning. Yep. Seems like these RAM do not seem to be in working order. Okay, good to know. A little bit of update, I found this 8 gigabyte stick right here. I know they are color mismatching and brand mismatching, so I hope that will not have any detriment to the performance, but these are both 12,800S. If you guys don't believe I have a parts bin, I literally have a gazillion screws right here for MacBooks. One gigabyte of RAM sticks right here. I have so many of them, two gigs. This is supposed to be eight and 16 right here. These are DDR2 RAMs. Plug this puppy right in right here. And here you go. Open this thing up. And voila, we just have to basically take this trackpad out and somehow reconnect it for it to perfectly fit into the trackpad cable. 
just like that. This is still fully functional, by the way. I just don't have the cable. Here's the tricky part. We're gonna have to guide this cable underneath this little passageway. Oh, look at that. We're doing our job here. Great. And then take the logic board out. I don't mind bending it a bit. That's fine. Okay, there you go. See, that wasn't so hard. Now we can put this cover back inside. Screw everything back together. Let's, here we go. It's not charging. Just hold Alt. And we're reading a couple of my installations of Mac OS. Okay, so this is running absolutely terribly right now, but all we have to do is just really open, open Core Legacy Patcher, and then it should automatically detect that we're not running the right configuration. And then it will automatically build its own drivers, and we should be good to go after this. A few hours have passed by, and I realize this trackpad isn't working at all. I've installed all the drivers needed for Open Core Legacy Patcher, so as you can see, it's actually a lot smoother. So I have come to the conclusion that this is actually a defective trackpad, I guess the multi-touch aspect of it. It still clicks. Let's say leave the cursor on the Apple logo. I can click anywhere. So I'm presuming this is really just a defective uh, unit. Luckily enough, the original still works properly. It's just the fact that I don't really have the cable for it. I'm just gonna risk taking the cable out just so I could have a fully functional computer right here, which actually looks fantastic with Monterey. Pry this open. There you go. And let's be careful. Okay, perfect. Just have to... Before we screw this thing up, why don't we go for a test run? Sit wrap. My worst nightmare came through. As you can see, there is a very slight tear on the cable. That little rip on the cable literally cuts everything off. So if I plug this thing right now, what it does is it will just turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. Which is weird. Now, if I unplug the trackpad, it would boot up normally fine, as you can see. Obviously there's no RAM right there, but look at that. And then it just cuts off again. So it has been a couple of days since I have made any progress with this project. Ignore everything on the background because that's gonna be for next week's video, which is gonna be quite a bit of a headache. You guys will see. But basically what I did I waited a couple of days. It is the holidays. I ordered this, I believe, right after I broke that cable. I ordered a trackpad cable replacement. It costed me a whopping $8.67, which, I mean, you know, it's not that bad. It's a cable. Uh, the problem already encountered is that this was quite bent just slightly, but I don't think there's any rips. Well, let's go ahead and see what we can do with this. Much as I want to restore this whole machine with a new battery, a new fan, and whatever whatnot you also have to keep in mind this is a 2011 comparing this to 2012 which is far more usable because it has a metal compatible graphic <sighs> we have to take off this two mismatching ram sticks can't wait for the replacement pull this thing out and actually let's not break that latch mechanism right there there you go be careful of the sharp edges which i believe was the reason why we accidentally ripped this thing apart last time. Now that we have successfully installed the trackpad cable for the third time, I hope this will be a permanent solution for this computer or else I am gonna freak out this computer. But man, dust again? I literally just wiped this not too long ago. Well, let's go ahead and start this thing up. Look at that, it's actually starting now. Hopefully, please, come on. Are we starting or what? There you go. You got me worried there. Looks like we're already on the good side of this. Yep, load up Monterey. And would you look at that? Look at this. We have a perfectly working trackpad. Tap to click works. 
add multitask or multi-touch actually works too. Now the specs on this back in the day was absolutely massive. To give you guys a context on how big of an improvement this was, the previous year, 2010 models with the i5 and the i7 15 inch models only came with dual core processors. Now they did introduce hyper threading on that year. However, with the 2011, this has become a quad core and that will eventually become a problem for these uh, chassis, for these uh, pre-retina models. This is getting to the point where quad core models on these aren't so efficient and they become space heaters because the thermal design of Apple is always has been not so great, uh, especially on the Intel era. These are very prone to graphics failures. And for the most part, as you can see here, this has a Radeon HD 6490M graphics. Now this isn't the maxed out one. I believe the maxed out one had a total of one gigabyte of DDR5 or GDDR5 memory. This only has a base model 256 megabytes, which I believe could be the reason why this thing is still running because it's a less powerful graphics. It does have the HD 3000 graphics, but the issue with the HD 3000 graphics is one, it's not metal supported. Actually, that's the same with the Radeon HD. And that means anything above Monterey or actually even anything technically above uh, Catalina, Mac OS Catalina, which was, I believe, released back in 2018, 2019. This thing is already getting pushed to its absolute limit. So now that we have a perfectly running 2011 15 inch MacBook Pro, we could start messing around with it. And why not try the internet? I mean, that's literally what everything is based on nowadays, right? So let's go ahead and open Google Chrome and see how long that thing takes to open. And, oh look, that's not too bad. That was actually pretty quick. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Seems like the, oh. That's some weird artifact right there. I don't think that's graphics. I just think that's probably the driver issue. Because this doesn't have any metal support, as you can see, it's quite a bit tricky when it comes to developers to really optimize these older machines right here for newer Mac OS versions. And Monterey isn't even the latest software, Sequoia right now. So I can't really imagine how this will perform on Sonoma or Sequoia uh, Mac OS versions. And Monterey would probably be one of the last best versions for this machine. And in fact, this thing was already having some low frame rate. But regardless, let's go ahead and ignore it. Let's go to YouTube and see how this goes. And let's go ahead and look at my YouTube channel right here. Man, this is one of the best keyboards I've ever tested in a while. And look at my YouTube video here that has not been popping. Only 440 views. I guess people don't really care about 11 inch MacBook Airs. Man, would you guys believe I got both of these for 20 bucks total? Yeah, I wouldn't think so. All right, so the speakers on this is leaning on the right side, which I have to believe that the left side might be dying. It sounds pretty good as a 2011 machine. I'm actually surprised, but it is a little bit louder or actually vastly louder on the right side than the left. And that might have to be just my unit. All right, so that was 480p. Can we go to 1080p right now and see if this thing loads? Put it a full screen and... Okay, so 1080p is not a problem for this machine. And of course we have an ad here. That's always great. Oh wait, this is my video. So I have to watch the ads, right? <laughs> Scrubbing through the timeline right here. We should be able to just watch it freely. Look at that. Boom. Very nice, very nice. Honestly, this is a very usable machine in today's world. Let's go ahead and go to the big 4K, see how that loads. As you can see, it is loading just a bit, just a little bit longer. All right, let's play this thing. Look at that. That thing is working perfectly fine. Okay. Now it does take quite some time to load, but that might have to be my internet. But 4K right now is perfectly usable on this computer. Look at that. 4K video on this, not a problem. All right, let's go ahead and go to the Apple store. You know, I'm actually very curious and actually very much interested in buying a new Mac mini. And the reason why is because these are very fantastic machines for the price. And look at that, I can browse easily. Might take a second to load, but you know, those eight gigs of RAM is still plenty enough for web browsing on Google Chrome. Buy now, 
Now I'm really debating if I should just get the base 10 core CPU and 10 core GPU Mac mini or go for an N4 Pro right here. The issue is that, man, when you click select here and go to the RAM configuration, this thing costs a lot. And I would love to have 64 gigabytes of RAM, but $600, that's a very hard thing to justify. When it comes to editing videos like these in 4K, it's quite a bit challenging when it comes to not a lot of RAM. And I guess 48 is a good medium, but if you can't really expand in the future when it comes to memory, you might as well just go maxed out. But then look at that, two grand for, and that's without any expanded storage. That's only with 512 right there. Now mind you, I do have a external drive my content, but it's quite a bit annoying when it comes to storage with Apple because they always overcharge. And this is no exception right here. A bit of an unstable situation when it comes to graphics because as you can see here, Monterey isn't really designed for these 2011 machines, but I mean, it, it gives you a very interesting effect right here with the run. It's just unfortunate how there's so many graphics uh, issues and instabilities when it comes to these pre-metal MacBooks. 60 FPS on this computer, on an online game, totally fine. Look at that. I love, oh, we got some lags here. Oh man. To conclude this video, with these machines, you could still use these machines in 2025. It's just the issue, I don't really recommend buying any 2011 at all machines. Any 2011 with discrete graphics like this one right here or the 17 inch, their failure rate are so high that pretty much I feel like you'll encounter them at least once in your lifetime. That's how bad they are. On top of that, software wise, these are limited to High Sierra Mac OS officially, which isn't really that good. Now the next year for 2012, it's not really any better when it comes to officially supported Mac OS. But when it comes to Open Core Legacy Patcher, a 2012 would fare up much better than these machines. And the biggest reason is that those machines, the 2012 15 inch, has metal supported graphics compared to this. And you guys are already seeing how bad they were uh, using the Radeon HD with the glitch artifacts and whatnot earlier playing run from Coolmat. And so, you know, this is to be expected with these machines. The fact that they're not really metal supported only means one thing. You're gonna be very much limited in your Mac OS options. Anyway guys, I hope you guys enjoyed these videos. Don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Look at that. And then it just cuts off again. If I plug this thing in. And then it boots up again. <laughs>